nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. What is going on? This is the Bills. Uh, this is Larissa Alexander, the Bills Pressure Front Podcast. Playoff edition. I'm your host JT with my co-host Lorenzo Alexander. Man needs no introductions. Oh, what's going on, man? I'm doing great, brother. Uh, you know, just enjoying the nice weather out in Phoenix. Getting back into coaching. Uh, just about to start our next uh, league here in the summer. Um, but other than that, man, you know, I had a great holiday. Had a great Christmas. A great uh, New Year's, and just uh, you know, just enjoying these bills too. You know, been really been fun watching them and seeing them dominate and. Looks like these uh, these guys are on a mission, you know, uh, not panicked at ease, but they focused and driven and passionate right now. So I'm liking what I'm seeing from them. Right. You know, the Bills made a lot of New Year's and a lot of Christmas is uh, very special for a lot of Bills fans who waited for moments like this for like the last 20 some odd years, if you want to call it that, um, as far as just the, 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 the pure dominance this season. Um I want to discuss today too. I, want, I don't want to talk about the Miami game too much. I mean, they came came out and thra- thrashed them boys. I mean, it wasn't even a, a it wasn't even close. How did, <laughs> right. Yeah. How, did, how, how did you feel about the situational football and McDermott ultimately making the decision to play the starters for about about a half? Yeah, I mean, it was solid. I mean, you have to do that. This league is too hard for you to be able to take weeks off and think that you can just turn it back on. You know, obviously there's some guys around the league that have kind of earned that right and have been around long enough and have played played it deep into the playoffs and have won Super Bowls that you 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 know you kind of give that nod to you think about Pat Mahomes and Ben Roethlisberger and, and people in that in that category. And this this team is trying to get there. And so I think Sean understands that. Um and you really never want to break the rhythm that you have. Uh, especially the way these guys are playing offensively. When you think about Josh and his offense and, and the amount of yards and the records that they're breaking and just the way they're rolling over teams. And so it's really good that you saw them come out there, play a half, um, dominate the game from start to finish. And even when the guys that come in to, came in to relieve the starters, uh, they continue to dominate. was very happy for Isaiah McKenzie, um, a guy that I've seen develop into, you know, a solid, um, you know, three, four receiver, and especially when they start taking all these other options away, it's another guy that we've always talked about. Somebody's going to always rise to the top. And so to see him do that in the the passing game, to see him do that in special teams, take one back to the house, uh, it was really fun to watch because he has been on a journey uh, ever since he got into Buffalo and has really continued to develop. And then, you know, defensively, I thought they came out there and did their thing as well. And, um that's been the the, the 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 cool piece as they head into the playoffs. Those boys on defense stepping up and playing well, and never allowed these guys offensively in the Miami Dolphins to get comfortable and feel like they could um, put up a game. Not that we want to talk about Miami too much, because like I said we got a long show lined up as far as the playoff uh, talk. How do you feel as a player with the the yo yo and the Brian Flores with uh? Two and Ryan Fitzpatrick, call Ryan Fitzpatrick a relief pitcher. Yeah, Do you think that messes with a psyche of a young quarterback like that. Uh, it all depends on how it's delivered and how they talk about it off, you know, you know, in the locker room with with Tua and and, and what they tell him before the games. I think he understands uh, it to an extent because you know Flores was putting it into a position to where I think they overachieved and and was ahead of where they thought they would be. Um, especially drafting a young young quarterback, but having the pandemic, you end up starting with uh, Fitz Magic, and then they find themselves in this playoff race. And so, but at the same time, you want to get your guy prepared for next year because you know you want to eventually transition to Tua. And if anybody's ever done a great job of kind of walking that line, I think uh, Flores did it well. Where I, I don't think at any time you ever felt like he was putting his team in a position to lose. And I think that's what you love. He was actually the anti Doug Peterson, right? You know, he's getting this young guy, his young guy, some looks, but Hey man, we trying to win these games. And if we try to win these games, I got to go to my guy. I got to go to Fitz. Cause I know he's going to be, he's, he's more seasoned and more prepared to be able to endure some of those pressure situations. And so I think he walked the line very well. And I, and you know, it might've, Maybe it hurts Tua a little bit, you know, in his progression. But I think from a psyche standpoint, 
I think he actually was relieved in some ways that he didn't have to deal with that pressure right now, right? You you have this, uh, you know, some people call it a pacifier, but you just have, you know, you know that if things get hot, I got my man Fitz that's going to come in and back me up and, and finish it off. And uh, I, I think you saw the difference in that when he knew he didn't have that in his last game, which they didn't, and, and the defense came out and dominated from start to finish. And we have a message from your mom of saying hello on the screen right there. Uh, okay, what's up? What's up, mama? <laughs> so, Got that workout tomorrow. Make sure your mind is right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, it, it's actually been very good to see her workout um, in these videos. Like I said, they're very inspirational. They're very inspirational seeing the work. Hey, but before we move on, any flag football stories this week? No, we uh we just been um practicing. We don't get to play until not this Saturday, but next Saturday. We actually got a scrimmage this weekend, uh, but we got a really good team. Um, I you know my son was on one team last year. We're playing with another group of friends this season, um, and so it's going to be fun. You know, guys out there just running around, good practice. But uh, this group of boys uh, are going to push Mace a little bit, and so it's it's, it's going to be fun to see. So uh, I'll, I'll start having some more stories after uh, in two weeks. So I want to talk to you a little bit about tonight about going into preparation for a playoff game and not give everything about what Sean Murdoch does, but how he does he prepare any different or tax the playoff game any different or preparation during the regular season? No, nope. it's the same as same as. And if you if you get to the playoffs and have to 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 change or shift from what you've been doing all year, then your system is broken. Um, your culture is broken. Your process is broken, and so. Because a playoff game is no different than a regular season game. Um, the only, obviously, the only real obvious difference is if you lose, you go home, you're done, the season's over. And so that doesn't actually change uh, how the game is played or how you prepare for the game. It, it really just changes the a pressure that you feel because of the implications of, uh, of losing or winning the game. And, and ultimately, you want to try to keep everything – same as, same as, because when you start switching things up, players think, oh, oh, I got to do something different. I got to do something more. Um, I got to go out here and raise my game up to a whole nother level. And then you start getting outside of yourself. And that's where you see the mental mistakes. Like, man, why did he make the play? Uh, you know, just uh, not performing up to your normal ability uh, because you are trying to do something different when we are as football players and athletes and just people in general are routine um, based. You know, you have a routine, you know, your body clock, you do certain things Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Thursday, Saturday to, to prepare. And when you start trying to shift, switch things off, your body's like, oh, oh, whoa, what are we doing? Your, your mind is like, whoa, whoa, what are we doing? And so it's always good in the organizations that I've been a part of when you keep things the same. Um, going into whatever week, big game, preseason game, playoff game. Um, and so I, I don't see Sean shifting anything, moving anything along. And, you know, he's always talking about the growth mindset. So this is a step, the next step for them in that process of achieving that Lombardi. And, you know, obviously learning from what happened last year, uh, uh, rising to the occasion in the sense of understanding where you're at and, and knowing that you don't have to do anything different, just go out there and just play the same game you've been playing, and you're going to definitely beat, a, I think, a good coach team. Um, and, and and just rock it that way. Because once you start, like I said before, like when you start moving stuff around and trying to get cued and trying to get creative, guys just kind of get thrown off of that. And they're like, man, do I got to do more? They put more pressure on themselves, and I think that's where most guys kind of fall short of what they actually want to do. And actually, Alan has been speaking on that um, about the point and said nothing matters if we don't go out and win the next one. That's our mentality. And uh, it seems like that's a lot of maturity and a lot of learning from that loss in Houston last year. Um, how does that affect the team psyche coming off a game like that, losing? Like, obviously, it could probably go both ways where, you know, yeah. you can build off of it. But it seems <laughs> like this team has embraced that and grown from every sense of adversity they face. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and I think it's all depend on what where, where a football team is, right? And I think uh, the Buffalo Bills as an organization is at the the beginning of their window, right? You know, we're just now pushing that open button, and their window is starting to open up. And so, uh, okay, we got next year. So that game was used more as motivation um, and fuel, and uh, you know, a really a, a foundational piece 
to to move you through the offseason, to encourage you to work hard and come back next year versus, you know, maybe another team that's on the back end. Let's say the Pittsburgh Steelers, for example, you know, their window is, is going up. Ben is almost done. You know, their window went down. They won one. Now it's starting to climb back up. And so I think the the mentality of those type of losses depend more on, on where you're at as, as a team. And so in, in Pittsburgh's case, if they lose this year, Ben may retire, shut down, they got to figure out how to get back into – that groove um, as far as becoming relevant again and finding their next franchise quarterback. So, uh, you know, I say all to say this, that um, because of where Buffalo is, because their nucleus is extremely young and they, they still have, you know, I, you know, this year and, and probably the next two to three seasons where they could be dominant at the top of the league uh, because of the culture that's been established. I think one of the things that we didn't think about, and this is something I thought about the other day, as far as wearing in a Stefan Diggs, obviously we know how much of a difference Stefan Diggs has made and what he's brought to the table, acts elite in the league in receptions and yards. Stefan has played a lot of playoff football and some deep playoff football, which does that help like bring guys in like Stefan who has playoff experience and this moment is not yeah. different for them? Right, yeah, it, it, it speaks to... He's, he, he'll be able to speak to his mindset in a playoff game and why he's still able to play at the level he he does in a regular season. And so he'll be able to help out a lot of the, the young guys, you know, whether it's, you know, different positions or even defensive guys, just be able to talk to them. I mean, I think there's a lot of guys on this team that have experienced the playoffs. May not be too many guys that have won playoff games. Maybe a couple of guys like Mitch, obviously, has won some se several playoff games, was one game away from the Super Bowl. Um, and there may be a couple other guys like that kind of sprinkled into the roster. But uh, for the most part, you know, guys have, you know, been one, one and done in the playoffs. And so he'll be able to speak to whatever his mind frame is, what has worked for him. And uh, that was something that I was able to tell guys when I was in there, just based on my failures and, and why I hadn't played well in, in playoff games before and kind of going back to what we're talking about because I felt like I needed to do something more. I had to have this great game instead of just playing myself and doing what I had been doing all year. And once I realized that for me, and I know Diggs will probably share the same thing, whatever he's sharing, you oh, man, that's all it took. That's what I got to do to stay in my zone. And that's when I went out there and had some of my best playoff games. And so I'm obviously he's found that because I've seen him dominate in the playoffs. He's had some big plays. You know, everybody thinks about that big play that he made against the Saints um amongst some other ones and so he'll be able to share that with guys and guys will hopefully take that internalize it and use it for their benefit now you talked about you know staying loose and just staying in your zone and attacking the playoff game the same way that you attack the regular season especially when you sustain when you've had the success that the buffalo bills have had now today there was a video that came out of them dancing and staying loose is that is that a telling yeah. sign, or does it mean anything? Was that a telling sign, like, hey, they're 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 just staying in what they've been doing all year? Yeah, that's what they do all year. I mean, them boys always dancing, man. You know, I felt like an old man out there last year with them boys. Man, man, chill out, man. Just just sit down somewhere. Yeah, but this is this is what they do all day. They staying loose, playing the music at practice, guys having fun, enjoying themselves. Uh, you know, at the end of the day, that's what it's all about. I mean, this game is so hard to be able to go out there with your boys, practice, you're in the playoffs, feeling good, uh, looking good, and therefore you're going to be out there playing good. So uh, all that stuff matters just in and just being loose going to the game. The worst thing you can ever be is just be uptight and um, so stressed and worried, and then you go out there and don't play a great game. I can see that. I can see that. You know, I just – I, I'm I'm ha I'm just happy to see these guys coming together and, and as you say staying together, um, yeah, and just staying in that rhythm. It seems like they're in a the zone. Um, it seems like they're just they're just locked in right now, and um, I think that's what you yeah. want to see. I, I was saying the other day I was talking to a uh, former Bill Donald Jones, and I was saying it to me as just as a fan and from a fan standpoint, it feels different from the Jacksonville playoff game to the Houston playoff game to this playoff game, just from the outside look in and like, you know what this, I feel like this team is going to go in there and win this game and they should. Oh, you didn't think we could beat Jacksonville? No, uh, no, no, I, I thought sure you... felt like I, we could beat Jacksonville. I thought I it was thought... going to be Houston last year too. I mean, yeah, yeah. I mean, but it's different. I mean, you expect them to win, you know, those, 
you know, in 17, we got in by the hair of our chinny chin chin. Somebody helped us out, you know, unlike the the the, the Philadelphia Eagles helping the Giants out. We got we got our help from Andy Dalton. Um because they didn't they didn't toss the game away. And then um and, and last year in 19, obviously we were a really good team, but I don't think we we're at the point we, where we were ready to make that jump. And obviously it was evident uh, by, by the way we finished that game. And there's some probably some other calls and some things that happened within that game that were uncharacteristic, and that's why we lost it. But it, it, it happened. But this year, the way these guys have been playing, the way the defense has stepped up, you expect them to beat the Colts. And the, and the Colts is a good team, though, know, right? But Phillip Rivers hasn't had greatest success in the playoffs. Um, and I don't know if he's going to be able to keep pace with this Bills uh, offense. Uh, just the way, you know, being a dome team, traditionally being in, in, in San Diego or L.A., um, and now having to come up to the frigid cold in Buffalo, where who knows what the weather's going to be like uh, on uh, Saturday. Um, you know, really the only thing I think they have going for them where there's a, maybe a concern right now is, you know, the running game. You know, Jonathan Taylor, a thousand yard back. And, and you know, and are they going to try to pound it? You know, and, and because the Bills have played well of late, but, you know, they're going to test it early. Um, and so that's the only area of concern. I think when you look at this game from the outside looking in like, OK, but overall, you expect the Bills to win. The Bills should win this game. There's no doubt in my mind. Uh especially with the way Josh is playing. I mean, at this point, it really doesn't matter what the defense does because he's playing on a whole nother level with that offense and the amount of points that these guys are putting up. So uh, I, I completely understand, even though it kind of hurt me a little bit, you didn't believe in us in 17 and uh, 19. But, you know, hey, it, it is what it is, man. You know, these bills is a, is a, is a different type of animal this year. All right, come on, man. I, I believe in you. I, you know, this is just a – it took a couple years of doing it for me to get that – that 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 yeah. that feeling. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You was a pessimist. Ah, oh, they made it, but uh, I don't know. And now, now you all you all the way on, man. It sounded like you was you had uh one foot kind of off of the wagon. Like ah, uh, now you just riding on that thing. You got both feet on, hanging on. Ah, you know, Listen, you ghost riding the whip right now. You acting ignorant because this team ignorant. is out there balling. <laughs> As they, as Chris Berman says, no one circles the wagon like the Buffalo. Bills, right? <laughs> so, preparation. You know, you brought up a good point about the dome, and this is something that I was worried about. And actually, we have a question in the chat about the same thing about them. Philip Rivers coming from bad weather. I mean, or I should say, good weather in L.A. for the last couple of years, San Diego, then going to Indianapolis where he's playing in the dome. Even though it's supposed to be forty degrees, a nice day in Buffalo. Forty degrees is still cold for a team that. Oh yeah, plays in the dome. Oh, it's cold. Yeah, I mean, I remember when Oakland came out, and 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 the Bay Area is not—it's nice, but it's not like a LA where it's always warm. And it probably was like a forty-degree day, and them boys came out there and and was shivering, and everybody had sleeves on. I'm like, man, this is perfect. Y'all don't know what y'all. What are you talking about? It's cold out here, um, and obviously it gets cold in Indy, and you know, being outside, but you're not practicing in it. Um, you haven't played in it a lot uh, because most of the teams in your division, either a dome team or a fairly nice weather city. Um, and so that does make a difference uh, when you go out there and playing and when you're just not accustomed to being in some cold weather, you're just trying to figure out how to stay warm. And, and it only takes one or two guys not to be focused. Uh, and there's a big play or, you know, there's a missed tackle. Oh, the quarterback throws the interception. He didn't have a great grip on the ball. You just you just never know what's going to be that moment uh, when you're not accustomed to being in or acclimated to being a certain type of weather. So it, it plays a part in it. Um, it's, I, I, you know, I don't know if it's as much as what people think may think it is, but it does play a small part in you being able to execute amongst all the other things, all the other adversity that you have to face in a football game in order to execute. Can it start a team up to a slow start sometime? Because obviously you're adjusting to the weather, you know, sometime a bad half or something like that at times. Yeah, it can happen because you're just trying to figure it out. You know, it, depending on how how hard it hits you, you know, I don't really want to be out here. You kind of feel your way. I mean, but at the same time, it is a playoff game, right? And so that mindset, if you're a good football team, shouldn't impact you as much just the wear and tear getting hit in the cold weather 
And like I said, it doesn't have to be everybody. It only, ha it only has to really impact maybe one or two guys where, like, I'm cold, man. I'm tiptoeing, or I'm not going to really throw it in there like I normally would. And those are the times you can take advantage of it. But guys like, you know, I, you know, I think about uh, uh, Autry. I think about Leonard. Guys of that elk, man, they're going to be out there flying around, balling out, man, because those are, those are football players. Um, it'll be some guys that are – also, that'll be out there that are, uh, you know, a little bit more are not as mentally strong as those guys. And speaking of Colts defense, I mean, it's it's a balanced defense. I mean, this Colts team as a whole is just balanced in general. That That's their identity. But you have right. playmakers, like you said, DeVorce Buckner, Darius Leonard. Um, I know Roxon, you're saying, is um, maybe out for this game. He's still in concussion yeah. protocol. Yeah. Um, how would the Bills attack this defense? Because like I said, I do know Darius Leonard flies around, but – you still have to worry yeah. about Josh Allen's legs, but what do you do? Yeah, I mean, Leonard is probably one of the best linebackers in the league. You know, he's up, up there. I know uh, uh, our linebacker coach, Bob Babbage, used to always challenge Tremaine uh, because they're the same draft class, and I, I believe Leonard went slightly higher than him uh, that year. Uh, so, it, it, But he's a he's a great talent flying around, and, and, it's, and it's fun to watch young guys like that get it early like a Tremaine Edmonds. Um, and so, you know, with that, they blitz him a lot. You know, he always having a ton of sacks, always having a ton of tackles. So he's going to be around a box and be fluid. And so you have to be physical with him. I think you do have to establish the run. Uh, but at the same time, we've talked about this all year. I mean, it's just hard to match up with him. You know, unfortunately, Cole Beasley won't be playing. So it's an opportunity for Gabriel uh, uh, Davis to step up. And I think this is going to be uh, a huge game for him and him being able to exploit and really showcase who he is. And I think that's probably where Diggs at, will probably – who he will benefit the most because he's never been in the playoff game, obviously, being a rookie. Um, and Smoke taking the top off. It's just going to be really hard. These guys are starting to play better. Obviously, the run game, I think, is, is, is coming on here strong too. Uh, so it's really going to be uh, whatever Dave really is feeling that he can take advantage of. And when you have a guy out like uh, Rock uh, Johnson um, – Maybe you attack the backup, you know, guys who haven't played that much, uh, guys, you know, that are younger because they do have a young secondary uh, of, of guys that have had to step into it. They've played well all year, but they've never had this moment. And so maybe the moment is going to be too big for them. Maybe they feel like they got to, you know, like we talked about early, do more than what they've been doing and show out. And it's their opportunity to make a name for themselves. And they try to do too much, get too aggressive. And then you take advantage of those guys, uh, youth, and, and, and lack of experience. And so I, I think they'll identify those guys, especially throughout the flow of the game, make their adjustments, which Dable is, is known to do. And then you'll see this offense uh, get stronger as the game goes on, as they really get a groove and an understanding of how um, Andy is trying to attack them. And speaking of, uh, you know, the receiving core, the Bills picked up Kenny Stills. It'd be very interesting to see if they can get him up to speed fast enough to actually be active for this game. I, I, I would doubt it, but you never know. Right. Yeah, you never know. I mean, he's a veteran guy. Uh, you can bring him in, and he, he is intelligent enough and have been around enough to at least have probably a handful of plays where he can come in and execute at a high level. Um you know, he's, I don't know how long Kenny's been in, but he's been in a long time. And so when you have guys like that that you can trust um, that have, that have, are, are proven in this league, um, you know he can come in and maybe give you a little bit. But, you know, with that said, I know Sean is always uh, good about elevating guys that have been there all year and who have earned it. And maybe you see somebody else that we haven't talked about get elevated for the week, and now they're in that spot where Kenny was more of a – just a safety net, just in case somebody wasn't ready or just in case somebody comes down with COVID at the last minute and you have a veteran player that you can now activate to fill a role and give you something versus scrambling, trying to find a guy last minute that who, who may not be quite as ready uh, on the practice squad per se. So, I, you know, that, that's how I think that'll fit in. And getting John Brown last week and actually getting him back into the flow, letting him get into the end zone, things that's a very key going into this game. Um, of having him in, exactly uh, with our uh, Gabe Davis and uh Stefan Diggs, almost perfect timing. So how we attack? How should we attack this Colts? Uh, Philip Rivers and this Colts office. As we know, they're a short passing team, a lot of screen play. As a defense, how are you preparing to stop that type of screen play? Because obviously they use a lot of two tight end sets too. Right. Yeah. I mean, I think it's going to start. 
and end with the run game, right? And so making sure that you if you if if you are dominant in any area in the game this weekend, it has to be in the run game and shutting that down early and often because once you do that stuff, all that other screen and play action stuff kind of dies down because now teams are, you know, uh, second and long. You can start feeling, you can get a better feel of what they're trying to do when guys aren't actually blocking you. Um, and you can kind of negate a lot of those those kind of slip screens that they do and like those mixed downs to really um, explode and, and get some of those explosive plays. And so, uh, you know, being dominant in the run game, stopping what they like to do, uh, playing on their line of scrimmage, um, and, and really making it hard for Phillip. And not necessarily not having to sack him, but at least hitting him, banging him up. Because, again, as we mentioned, it's, it's cold. And, and nobody really wants to be hitting, getting off that cold ground over and over and over. And knowing that he's he has had his struggles in the playoffs um, as far as, you know, getting to the big one because he has playoff wins. Um, you want to make sure you send a message to him early and often and um, really just throw him and his whole team's rhythm off. You know, it's very interesting to see him, even though he's not what you would not consider an immobile quarterback and kind of a throwback quarterback, he's only been sacked 19 times, which shows his pocket presence. And he he's a veteran and knows how to slide yeah. around the pocket. Yeah, that, and then guys get the ball out. They know what defense you're in, and they can get it out. Even if somebody's coming, oh, I'm getting rid of it. I'm not taking this sack. You know, he, he he's really he's really good at that. And even when he was still in uh, – well, I guess it was at L.A. at the time when we played him last time. He was really good about getting the ball out of his hands really quick. You got to get your hands up because he does have that kind of that sidearm release, mm -hmm. and you can actually get some batted balls as well. So look out for guys getting their hands up and getting some of the balls batted up, and hopefully maybe uh, one or two can turn into some uh, interceptions for guys. Would you attack him the same way that you kind of attack that Pittsburgh Steelers game because they have a similar game plan? Uh, yeah. Yeah, you can see that having something similar there and then tweaking it to, to what works against um, Indy, um, you know, Indianapolis, uh, you know, especially when you think about guys up front, like a Quentin Nelson, who's an all pro caliber player. Um, they may not have the same weaknesses in protection um, in certain areas. Um, and so you have to identify who that guy is and where you can take advantage of them. Uh, but I, I do remember, and I know, and I know Sean is going to play because the last time we played Indy, I mean, they physically beat us up. I mean, they yeah. ran the ball all over us, right? Um, and we had a little effort late, but it wasn't good enough to to, to win yeah. the game. They really dominated us in the front seven. So I already know Sean has already challenged the men and shows that film. And so um, it's all about being more physical than they were right. um, last time. This I think time. that game was 224 yards, rush yards, if I think off the top of my head. <laughs> yeah. Oh, just this off, this off the top of your head. Uh, two, 224 yards. Uh, just, I'm not, I'm not, I'm, yeah, I didn't remember that game, but yeah, two, 224. Matt, Matt dominated y'all guys. All right. Oh, man. Come on, man. You pay, you, 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 hey, you killing all the teams you. I was a part of, man. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> uh, <laughs> shows up on, sir. Let, let's get to your three keys of the game before you get these people running me out of here. <laughs> oh man, I think I think we covered them. I mean, I think it's it's first being more physical than they are. Uh thinking about that game last week or last time we played them, um being physical up front, uh playing downhill and really stuffing them in, in, in the run game and setting the tone early that you guys are, aren't going to dominate us here. We're gonna have to put the show the ball in Philip Rivers' hands and then we're gonna pin our ears back and get after them. Uh number two, the offense has to get out to a fast start. Um, scoring early, uh, obviously get down into the red zone. It'd be great to score in your first couple of drives, touchdown, field goal, preferably two touchdowns, just to really increase that pressure on Phillip. Like, man, okay, I'm here again. These boys have jumped out on us 10 nothing, you know, maybe 14 three. Oh, here it goes again. You know, you don't, you don't want him to get into a rhythm where maybe he feels comfortable because this may be, may or may not be his last hurrah where he wants to go out with a bang. So you really want to increase that pressure on him. Um, and then, and then really lastly, it's, it's not, it's not beat yourself trying to do too much. Right. So, you know, the penalties being out of position uh, kind of goes to one of the first principles or, or, or points that we talked about playing within yourself, not allowing the moment uh, to make you lose yourself within it, you know, just same, same, same ass, same ass. 
uh, just the way you've been playing the last, you know, six, seven weeks of the season. All right. You guys heard as those three keys to the game. Zo, are you going to say it? You know, four no when you say this is this is a game they should win. Of course, it is. Okay. I, it, no. should, it shouldn't even be. It shouldn't be close. You know, blow the doors off, baby. All right, four no when the team say that. Hey guys, this is the Bills, <laughs> the Bills, like the Bills Press Front Podcast. That's our playoff edition show. Hey, they got one job. One job was one not done. Let's go out there and get it. Get the W, and hopefully we'll be back next week. But hey guys, catch you guys later. Thank you, Zoe. Thank you, Bills Mafia. Go Bills. Go Bills. Peace.